Hello peeps, Whiplash back with another tutorial video and it is time to talk power management. So I'm sitting in my Air Review hangar on New Babbage and uh, let's jump right into it. I'm going to try and not to babble too much because there's a lot to get through so let's get straight to the point. Um, the power triangle down here which you may be familiar with as it was in version 313, the current live build, basically does nothing. That was confirmed by the developers in a in a recent video. So this guy over here, you can move it around as much as you like. If your ship had enough power being supplied to it, then this basically does nothing. Uh, the power triangle as is has a setting for weapons, for shields, and for engines. And you know, if you move that around in the latest live build, then you would notice absolutely no difference whatsoever. In 3.14 that is no longer the case. It now has a definite function, because these three energy pools now do something. And we'll get into that just now. So, the intention being that in any given situation, depending on what you're trying to do, you have a pool of energy available to you that you can use to either boost energy to your weapons, to boost your shields, or to give boost to your thrusters, um, which is now known as, conveniently, boost. It used to be called afterburner. The effect is pretty much the same, but it provides additional power to your thrusters. So, um, I think the best way to show exactly what the three power uh, management pools are all about is to give you some practical demonstrations. In order to do that, I'm quickly going to request takeoff. And once they open the doors, we'll uh, head outside. You are clear to launch. And then I can show you what it is I'm talking about. heard over the noise. I just uh, here raise my Thank hand you. Yeah. Oh, if I redeploy them. Haha, <laughs> silly me. Any case, alright. So let's get into it. Um, I'm currently accelerating out of the atmosphere. Let me just get my set speed back to more or less where it should be. Around about there, I think is good. And obviously, on a planet with gravity, um, your ship will be battling against the pull of gravity in order to try and get you out of atmosphere and into space. Now, um, you can see on the left here, if I just zoom in, this is the current thrust output the ship is giving, um, which is below maximum, seems to be fluctuating a little bit for some reason. Now, boost the amount of energy that's available to boost allows you to give a little bit of extra juice to your thruster. So if I want to get out of atmosphere faster, I can hit the boost button. And I now get this nifty indicator here on the left hand side, counting down to zero, that shows me that I'm putting additional thrust into my power plant. Okay, so that was not as effective as I had hoped for the very simple reason and that's what I've still got my speed limiter on. So let me turn off the speed limiter and actually allow the ship to accelerate a little bit and then we'll try that again. That's much better. Okay. Now we're cooking. You'll see thrust is now off the scale and the engine's really pulling. Okay, so this is a handy trick for getting out of atmosphere a bit faster or in situations where you really need just that extra little bit of thrust uh, in order to get out of trouble. Now all of this behavior it's you know, it comes with a fancy new GUI and everything so that bit is not necessarily all that new. You had boost in previous patches as well. What is new is the power management bit so if let me just boost a little bit more. So if you have a look at boost counting down and then obviously 
there's a short delay and then it starts recharging back to 100% again so if you um, just have a look at visually how fast that's busy happening if I now let's go down to the power management triangle again if I take power away from my shields and weapons and push it towards my thrusters so you see now it's 25 25 50 so I've got a hundred percent to play with I can set that to well various different values uh, all the way up to hundred percent into the engines and nothing to the others and you can so that's done by the F keys F5 goes to weapons uh, F6 to thrusters F7 to shields and F8 rebalances everything back to default so let's just push a little bit of extra energy into my boost now um, let's do the boost again so it boosts about as much as it did previously but you'll notice that the recharge rate is now much faster and that's because I've allocated more of my energy pool towards my thrusters so boost will regen a lot quicker this way if I rebalance it so that let's set it back to default and I take let's say all of my energy to shields and weapons and nothing to my thrusters now I boost and boost will still decrease but because I've allocated no energy to it it will stay where it is until it's depleted well, if I keep on using it, it'll eventually deplete and it will not recharge. So I actually need to increase that recharge rate back to a positive number and then my boost starts increasing again. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. That's how boost works. Now that we're almost out of Atmo and uh, heading towards space, I can demonstrate the second bit, which is weapon recharge rates. Now I mentioned in my previous video talking about the new HUD that all energy weapons and here's my four bulldogs which are the default loadout for the Aurora all energy weapons have now got a energy pool again taken from the power management pool or the power available that um, is read basically as a ammunition loadout if you want to call it that so if I take uh, all of my energy and allocated to the four weapons that I have on the Aurora I get 41 charge per weapon and if I fire my weapons that charge comes down so that was group 1 now group 2 I can fire all of them at the same time and you'll see that if I keep on firing so if I just tape down the fire button as we all like to do in previous patches eventually I run out of charge and then I have to wait there's a short recharge delay before the recharge kicks in and my weapon starts charging back so the intention of this obviously is to make combat more tactical to prevent you from just firing without end at every target in sight and eventually just blowing it up through sheer weight of firepower and a little bit of luck now um, there's a couple of ways that you can potentially increase the charge to your energy weapon you can first off use the pipe power triangle as we've been talking about and now I can increase my energy output to the weapon so let's push that up to let's say 83% oh, that should be good and now you'll notice that the charge level has increased from 41 to 47 so I've now got a little bit more charge available because I've allocated more of the energy pool to my weapons and not only do they have a little bit more charge available to them the region delay is shorter and the recharge also happens faster so then I'll take less time to fill up the maximum charge again as previously so let's just rebalance everything back to default if I let's say shove all of my energy back to my engines again I can still fire but once the charge depletes because I'm not allocating any energy to them you'll notice my weapons will not recharge so then I'm stuck at 
their current charge level and now I can actually deplete them like you would for a ballistic weapon which has finite ammo. Now I need to push energy back into my weapons before they start recharging again. So that's fairly straightforward. The other thing that you can do uh, if you have more than one energy weapon available and I've got um, obviously multiples so I've got four bulldog repeaters. Let's say I want to turn group zero off. I've now disabled two of my four guns. Now what happens is the available charge goes to the other ones. So I can intentionally turn power off to some of my weapons in order to increase the available charge to the other ones. So now group one or group zero as it's labeled they will not fire at all while group one has double the charge available because all the charge is going to that now instead of to the others. So you can manage your energy pool across all of your available weapons that way. Let me just turn them back on. Oh, I see that one's turned on by itself, interestingly enough. Okay, now they're all on again. So they should now all be recharging. And there we are, back at full charge again. So this just gives you the ability to react to any particular combat situation by managing the energy output to your engines, your shields and your weapons. So you might go into combat with a little bit more of a tanky mentality and uh, in order to do that let's say you're not as worried about maneuvering because you've got a big ship that can take the hit so you might say well I'm going to push as much energy as I can to my shields and to my weapons and just leave it off the, um, the thrusters you could leave everything as default and just fly the ship as it is that's also perfectly fine um, the other one that I haven't now shown you is shield region but unfortunately there's no way for me to demonstrate that because I'm not currently under fire but the intention is that pushing energy to shields would increase your shield regen rate as well as potentially increasing the strength of your shields so that I don't have a readout for while it's all 100% down here and uh, if I now push more energy into the shields, let's just do that. Well, you can actually see, if I just um, look over here, you can actually see the power level available to the shield increasing, but the shield rate itself has not changed. So, but you can try that out for yourself in combat. Um, you know, push a bit of extra energy to your shields and then compare the, the region rate with uh, more energy versus less energy. So that is a very very quick overview of the new power management capability that you have uh, in Alpha 314. So you've got boosting, which will region at a certain rate. You've got weapons fire, which has a certain amount of charge available to it that you can play with and you've got shield regeneration and you can rebalance these things dynamically in combat using your hotkeys uh, like I said if you want to fly at default you can but it's now possible for you to push power around to whatever system you feel uh, needs it the most. Uh, one thing that I still want to play with is um, trying to see if a co-pilot or uh, you know other player in a multi crew ship would actually be able to play with the power triangle while you busy flying the ship and whether that would have the desired effect so that's maybe something that you can go and try out should be interesting at any rate I hope you enjoyed that and found this video useful it will help you get up to speed with the new power management capability in 314 which um, should be dropping soon my guess probably by this weekend today being the 28th of July so within the next couple of days I think you'll all be playing it uh, along with me.